lifting. So as you fall forward, your shin angle, I know you probably can't see this if you're listening, but your shin angle gets Actually, smaller. Actually, I guarantee they cannot see yeah, this I'm if they're listening. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of <laughs> Couches on Couches. Bean <laughs> slouches. So, uh, yeah, that's nice. We're just testing out some new uh, new intros here. <laughs> yeah, let us know what you prefer the most. Yeah. I liked that one a lot. Mm-hmm. Good, good. It was like the opera. The yeah. opera intro. Yeah, just like I it. I it's like The Simpsons. Like, <laughs> every time we'll do a different intro. I like it. Maybe we'll switch places on the couch. No, let's not get, that's get not. crazy. Don't want to get too crazy. <laughs> All right. Today we are talking about the three easiest running form changes that you can make to have the biggest impact. I am Coach Dale Sanford. I am Coach Bryant Funston. Sitting here with Coach Chris Winter. Our coach run aficionado, Chris Winter. Yeah. Uh, We are the co-founders of BPC Performance Coaching, where we specialize in helping time-crunched athletes optimize their busy schedules so they can maximize their athletic performance. Every BPC coach is trained in our five pillars coaching system that has been developed over the last decade through our work with athletes of all ages and ability levels from fresh off the couch to world championship competitors. You can find out more about BPC by going to buildpeakcompete.com checking Facebook and YouTube at Build Peak Compete and all up on the Instagram at BPC Performance. Nailed it. Now that that sweet intro is out of the way, Boom. phone is gone. Yeah. So before we get to these running mechanics uh, changes, a couple of little housekeeping things. Just a reminder, we've got our youth running uh, summer camp coming up. Yep. June 25th through the 28th, uh, that's at Christian Brothers High School if yeah, you're yeah. local. Um, really great opportunity for kids to learn proper running form, mm-hmm. kind of the, the skills of speed. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll also throw in some good uh, race-specific tactical things. We'll yeah. have a lot of fun. We might see the, the T-Rex return. The T-Rex you might make never, it out of retirement. I never know. know. Mm-hmm. One more thing. Shout outs. Boom. Shout outs. We got a lot. This may take a minute. That's right. why we sh- chose a shorter If topic. you don't like the shout outs, mm-hmm. you might just want to tap that yeah. tap that Fast 15 forward. second button <laughs> Fast a couple Fast times. Forward. Uh, this weekend was probably one of the biggest weekends of the year as far as, for me anyways, as far as uh, athletes racing. I think I had like 75% of my athletes doing an event. Um, a lot of folks at the Memphis and May Triathlon this year. Uh, a couple couple of highlights here. <clears throat> uh, Greg Rohde, who's been on the couch before, did his first amateur challenge, which included his first Olympic triathlon, um, and took two minutes off of his sprint from last year, same course. So two-minute PR on the course. Uh, so On a so slower also, day. From yeah. What? On, yeah, on a slower day. Actually, the bike course was about over a quarter mile longer, three, yeah. t- three tenths longer. So, um, so yeah, awesome improvement. Uh, Heather Nichols, same thing. PRs all over the place. Uh, Tony. Tony Gambrell. Another yeah. another good uh, amateur challenge. Now, amateur challenge, for those that don't know, were people that did the sprint and the Olympic distance race in the same weekend. Uh, Jamie Bailey. Uh, John Zinn came in, sprint, got a, got a PR. Uh, Cliff Abelas, Wayne Gorzlek. Wayne actually ended up fin- finishing second age group, I know, on Sunday. Um I forget where he landed on on Saturday, but great great weekend for him. Uh, Dr. Tom Ratliff came and threw down in the in the sprint. Michael Work came and did uh, both races. I think on the on Saturday he actually did a relay with his eighty year old father. He did. Which, I saw them out on course. Yeah, which That's was cool. which is a cool thing. Um, our St. Jude crew. Yep. Yeah, St. Yeah, Jude yeah. crew. Chris. Uh, yeah. Chris closed it out for them yeah. and uh, won the uh, mixed relay division. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? What else from from Memphis and Man? I know we're well, no, uh, big and, Dave Harrington. 
Big Dave. Had, uh, he was doing the other, uh, on one of the other mixed relay teams. Yeah. And yeah. so they ended up second. So we had first and second in the yep. relays. Yep. And yep. another shout out to Big Dave. He just had ro- uh, his second rotator cuff surgery. Uh, yeah, what's today? Whatever today is, on Tuesday. Um, and so he's healing up from that. So heal up quick, yep. Big Dave. And even now, uh, we even had uh, one of the one of our um, out of state House of Pain uh, yeah. folks, Daryl Sweeney, came down, That's threw right. down in both races, and he ended up he ended he was in the top fifteen in the Amateur Challenge. So yeah, if we awesome. add all the people who've done House of Pain, this would be a really long. This shout-outs would be list. really long. Like, <laughs> we're not even done with shoutouts yet. Be, no, we're not. Keep we're them not. going. We're not. All right, so uh, we're, we'll kind of transition over to Ironman Chattanooga seventy point three. Uh, Philip Young and Adrian Hall went over. Adrian had a big PR. Great race, really, start to finish. They cut the swim a little short, but even if you add another like five, six minutes in for this, the amount they cut out of the swim, still would have been a PR. Uh, he had a real smooth race. Philip, uh, he swam easy and had a fantastic swim and then smashed the bike completely. He he was faster on the bike. He rode like a 219, faster bike time than a lot of the pros. Um, and then had a decent run, kind of that very difficult run on that mm. course, uh, but um, PR for him, and so pretty pretty solid, Sweet. pretty solid weekend at, at Chattanooga. I got one more before I let you go. Uh, <laughs> okay. You got a lot of folks Gary, this weekend. Gary Z, Gary Zyrick, uh went out and did the uh, Chiha Challenge again, um, 128 miles and, and 13, almost 13,000 feet of vertical. Uh, long day in the saddle, but Gary had a uh, had a great day out there and uh, actually enjoyed himself this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last year was not so much. Yeah, he's gonna sell his bikes after yeah, last year. I think year, he right? wanted to sell his bike after last <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, that's not a good day then. What you got? I got. Um, I had a client this weekend that I've been working with for probably six or seven months. Uh, William Hennessy um, lives uh, around Atlanta. Did the assaults on Mount Mitchell. Uh, which is a tough, tough ride. It's kind of like a Grand Fondo. And um, he did it this year in five hours and 49 minutes. Last year, he did the same route in six hours and 29 minutes. And so it's big improvement. I think this year he was 17th overall. Last year was 108th overall. Um, and he won his age group this year, too. And last year, he was 11th in his age group. So all around improvement for him. He yeah. was pumped. I'm pumped. That's fantastic. A, yeah, I mean, he's, it was he's, a big ride. It's like... 10,000, 11,000 feet of elevation gain. So, yeah. Like what a year can do. You know? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you, this is what, when you come back around and do some of these events that you've done prior, yeah. as long as the course is the same, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you can kind of see what a, a year's consistency in training can do, yeah. can do for you. Uh, any other ones? I think that's it. I think that's it. I know Dr. Downing on our relay, he told me, and Brian, you might can confirm, but he said he was a minute quicker this year on his bike. Yeah, he shaved off 40, yeah, he was 40 seconds faster. I think it was 40 yeah. seconds faster. But he also had his uh, peak ever 60 minute as part of that relay. There you so go. Yeah, he was we good. Were, uh, it wasn't, we I wouldn't say it was the fastest day ever on that course the, mm-hmm. on Sunday because the, the roads were a little wet and the, the wind was not favorable at all. Yeah. I mean, we the, the, the tailwind section that we got was like the shortest section of the course. <laughs> so, that was, uh, and the headwind section was the longest. The longest stretch, Ooh, yeah. yeah. So, fun times. All right, let's get to right, it. For those that actually made it through all the shout-outs. <laughs> yeah, if you've made it through You the must shows, be an athlete. You must be yeah. one of our athletes who received a shout-out. We're roughly nine minutes in here, and uh, <laughs> we haven't said a thing yet. So, um, so, let's get to it. So, these are going to be the three easiest, like absolute easiest running form changes you can make, like today, and, and have them, uh, you know, have some marked improvement if you, if you focus on it. Yeah. Um, and these are things that I like I've been folks I've been teaching running mechanics for for 12 years, 13, 12, 13 years now. And, you know, so you pick up the things that that really do like click for people and make a huge improvement. And we're all about making improvements as quickly as possible. So mm-hmm. whenever I teach somebody or go over running mechanics, these are like the first things I start with uh, just, you know, just to have them get a little bit of feel good mm-hmm. they get the feel good and then they'll start focusing on the stuff more and more and this um, is also a lot of stuff that is is something that we have to correct a ton too yeah. mm-hmm. so not only is it like the easy stuff to correct but it's also something that a lot of people are making mistakes in yep 
Uh, so that's like the double whammy. All right. So number one, Boom. line of sight. Line of sight. Yeah. Where are you looking? Where are you looking? Straight down. Yeah. No. Down is fast. Look up at the sky, right? Cloud. At the birds. Yeah. No. So we want to keep, so when we're talking about line of sight, we want to keep our line of sight roughly about 30 feet out on the ground. And that's going to keep our chin down and tucked and keep our spine neutral, our cervical spine. So your neck. So a lot of people's mistake is looking up at the horizon or looking at the rooftops or whatever. And when you pick your head up that much, uh, it tends to bring your hips forward. And so your, your whole, your whole body kind of rocks backwards a little bit and that can lead to uh, front side contact. So landing out mm -hmm. in front of your hips, uh, which, if, which stalls out your momentum stalls out. Like you, when you land out in front of your body, the ground pushes back on you and you slow down. So, uh, if we keep that chin down a little bit, line of sight 30 feet out, you could even, uh, uh, you know, this is where the old talk of pace booty comes mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. If you find a good pace booty, mm -hmm. lock in on it. <laughs> keep that chin that down. That would be the behind in front of you. <laughs> yeah, is what, pace for those booty. unsure. Booty me. Pace Everybody. booty is the, the behind in front of you that is moving at the same pace that you want to be yeah. moving at. Well, thanks for clarifying that. I think <laughs> people know what pace booty is. I don't know. They might not. I was lost. Oh, you were? <laughs> I've never heard of the pace boot. I mean, yeah. I like that now. Well, you got it now. Yeah. See? Good thing I gave some instructions. I'm going to use that tomorrow night when I race. Yeah. <laughs> so keep that chin tucked and, uh, and keep that spine neutral. Uh, the worst thing you can do, especially going uphill, mm -hmm. is looking up the hill. Yeah, no longer are you going to be looking 30 feet out in front right. once you get to a hill. When the hill comes, if the hill, if the incline is steep, you're actually going to be looking in a shorter line of sight. Mm -hmm. Um but you never want to be looking down at your feet. No. Uh, you know, if you get into that marathon shuffle, mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to be there. Um, you don't want to be looking down at your feet. So even if you're trail running and you have to like, you want to be looking up the trail uh, for obstacles or whatever. You don't want to be looking three steps in front of you and have to react to things that are that close. You want to be looking up the trail a bit. So just keep that chin tucked a little bit. And then if you're going uphill, you're going to be looking more into the hill than you are up yeah. the hill. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, it's all about keeping that, that neutral head position. Yep. Yeah. Because where that head goes, the body's going to follow. Yeah, the body will and follow. if we're tucking, we're shooting hips back, and that's bad. Yep. And vice versa. If we're yep. looking way up, hips are coming too far forward. So number two, we're mm -hmm. on. Numero dos. Power your legs with your arms. So think about your arm movement, like adding to the power of your leg movement. So um, we want to think about popping the opposite elbow back. So as the left leg is extending backwards, that right elbow is driving backwards. All right. So um, you don't, a lot of people don't really know how off they are until they do something like, like, the first time I realized how imbalanced I was on one side versus the other was when I was pushing a stroller. So if you're like pushing a stroller and you go with one arm and you only have one arm moving and one arm stopped, like you can feel how uh, like one arm and leg are synced up more than the other when you switch hands. <laughs> um, so th like thinking about powering the legs with the arms syncs them up a little bit better and then you get that actual drive with the arm powering the opposite leg. So especially going uphill, think about powering those, those legs with the arms. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's uh, it's something it seems like it happens automatically. And to some extent it does. But when you're, when you're trying to lengthen out your stride a little bit, um, we have to have more powerful arm movements uh, to, to get that big pushback that we want when we're trying to go for longer strides. Yeah. So power those legs with the arms. I think the number one thing I've seen since we've started, or since I've been coaching high schoolers, and since we've more recently started the, the Wednesday night run tech sessions, um, is just poor arm movement amongst folks. And I, I do it myself, so... When I get tired, um, most people, it gets worse when they get tired and they're running, but they're, and the number one thing when I meet, see when I see it's poor is their arm, they move their arms real long mm -hmm. and slow. So like it, 
the longer by long arm movement i mean it you know you're pushing your arm out really far in front of your body far in front of your hips and then it's going too far behind your body and that makes your legs move slower yep. too so short arm movements help lead to quicker leg turnover or cadence which which can help you go quicker you it's, know and it's really easy to fix once you see it you know like a lot of people once they see themselves run the first time like i did i was like oh my gosh that's what i look mm -hmm. you know i look like and it can really help if you can get some video footage done to see what you're running and you can make changes yeah but yeah absolutely i mean the the number one thing that happens when people get tired is their hands start to fall yeah it's like a boxer your, your hands start to fall and it's then you get knocked out you're, oh, yeah exactly <laughs> and you start to you're because of the arms start to get physically longer that lever's longer and that that arm movement happens over a longer period of time and you can't physically you can't like when you're running naturally, you're not going to get your arms and legs out of sync like a lot. They can be a little out of a little out of sync, but they're not going to get really out of sync. Um, but your arms are like metronomes for your legs. So if your arms are moving slow, your yeah. legs are going to turn over slow. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. really no way to like yeah. r have really fast arms and really short legs mm -hmm. or really short strides or whatever slow strides. Yeah. So yeah, make sure we holding the hands up tight. And I always tell people, think about the, the action happening at the elbow versus the hand it's through the shoulder, but action happens at the elbow. Yeah. Uh, popping the elbows backwards, keeping the hands high. Yeah, more of a pop than a swing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always say pop. It's not a casual swing of the arm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's more intentional. It changes a little bit when you start to really dig in and, and it's turn the legs over. It's intentional, yeah. you know, yeah. increase in speed. And it's easier to do if you if you don't let your wrists flop. Like one thing I'll tell uh, youth uh, runners I coach is have you know strong wrists. That's a cue for them, you know, because a lot of times their wrists will just break, their hands will start flopping, and then that can throw off that elbow pop too. So it's easier to pop the elbow back if you kind of have a coffee mug hand or potato chip hand. So. The old the old coffee mug and mm -hmm. potato chip. And we yeah. use the coffee mug analogy when we're working with the eight year olds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, nowadays, morning, yeah. yeah. When you're drinking, you're drinking your, your latte, latte, not beer stein. You're not beer stein. We don't want beer stein. Your seven splendor coffee mug. <laughs> cappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. I guess bonus while we're talking about arm swing, like when we think about stuff that we correct a ton is coming across that midline Absolutely. of the body yeah. a yeah. ton, leading to a bunch of upper body rotation. Mm -hmm. And then that that's like a downhill spiral too. Yeah, if you're wasted getting, energy and a lot of action going through the low back and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, if you're getting the chicken wings or the bulldog going, mm -hmm. uh, we need to pull those elbows in toward your side and make sure that they're moving straight front to back. Yeah. Like lateral movement, we're in a linear sport mm -hmm. running. Lateral movement isn't going to help you whatsoever. So keeping the arms straight front to back, you could you know we always kind of allude to like the hand moving from uh, close to your eye socket, then going towards your back pocket and not uh, not coming across the midline of the body. Exactly. Prevent the twist, prevent the twist. All right, the, uh, the last one is one that you're, you'll have to like feel out. Mm -hmm. So um, you always wanna let your hips, like if you think about your hips, like your pelvis, your hip bones, uh, let your hips and your chest fall forward together. So that means that there's a there's a some tautness, some uh, uh, synergy between your hip and your shoulder, kind of your your clavicle, or your uh, you know sternum, keeping that rubber band tight. It was an analogy that we always use. Mm -hmm. So because those things are are kind of taut and tight together, they'll fall together. And that's how we get that good forward lean and kind of uh, allow gravity to help us uh, create forward movement. Um, so whenever we work on mechanics with somebody, so the we have this mechanics crash course that we've kind of refined and taught for the last 10 years. And these are like, this is like the most simple progression that we could ever do with somebody, but it just clicks, it's, things start to click. And we do a lot of falling starts in that, in that progression. And the falling start is basically just standing straight up, locking your body in place, keeping that 
we call a rubber band tight between your hip and your neck, basically. And so that locks your upper body in place. And then you just lean forward until you feel your heels barely start to lift off the ground. And then you can start to run or you can start a drill. Um, but yeah, that, that's the key is feeling that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can rock and you can just stand in place and rock back and forth. And you can start to feel pressure build up on your midsole, yep. your midfoot. And, and then you'll kind of just feel your heels relax the ankles. And you'll just feel the heels start to lift off the ground. Uh, and that's where you, you can really feel gravity start to kind of take over mm -hmm. and do some of the work for you. And, and the big key there, yeah, is keeping that, that straight body line mm -hmm. the yep. whole time. Yeah. Like, don't do the shoot the hips back yeah. and hips forward and hips back and forward. Like, keep that good straight body you're, line. You're pretty locked in from your knee to your shoulder. Exactly. Yep. And the, the lean, this is the kind of a misconception for a lot of people, is the lean when you're running actually happens at the ankles. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you're allowing the ankles to relax and you're, you're kind of... Uh, flexing uh at the at the ankle yep. um kind of dorsiflexing so as you fall forward your shin angle i know you probably can't see this if you're listening but your shin angle gets Actually, smaller I guarantee they cannot see yeah, this I'm if they're listening sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your foot and your shin get closer together right visualize as with your us. as your shin angle decreases your foot and your shin get closer together mm -hmm. And what that's actually doing is is helping produce force backwards so that you can go forward. Mm -hmm. But what it's also doing is it's allowing your body to f start falling without having your butt out and your you know your chest forward and your butt backwards. And we're locked in. We start that fall, and then we can start to run. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, we do that over and over and over and over again. I actually just did that uh, today with a client that I had right before uh, filming this. Absolutely. I mean, we did the, the rock back and forth, feel the midsole, don't get on the toes. Yep. But we also don't want you back on the heels, and don't let the hips break yep. while you're doing it. Yep. Yeah, we actually just worked on all this stuff. Good. Perfect timing. So, apply it. Apply it. You might find, I, like something I've been finding is people that don't have good mobility through their ankles. It's something that yeah. you have to work, whether it's through like tightness of the Achilles and calves. Yep. Um, but if you do not have good mobility through your ankles, you're going to be adjusting. That's kind of our part of our bonus here. We're getting to it. I'm really like building up the yeah. suspense here. <laughs> building the suspense. But the la like the last little bit there of you know, letting everything fall forward is when the action starts to happen mm -hmm. and you actually have to start running. Uh, we want to focus on lifting the heels. A lot of people, um, when they're running, they're, they're thinking like punching the knees and, uh, you know, we, we don't teach pushing backwards until we get kind of that easier running form, like steady, easy pace, kind of really really smooth, relaxed running form down. Um, but we always try to get people to immediately, once they kind of get that lean going, feel the gravity take over, think about pull, bringing your heels up. Knees stay kind of pointed toward the ground. They might lift a little bit, mm -hmm. but knees stay pointed toward the ground and the heels come up towards your butt. Like if you look at, you could go at the finish line of pretty much any race, any marathon, and watch the first 10 people come across the line and watch maybe 10 mid-pack people come across the line and then watch 10 of the, the last the 10 back. who are actually running still yeah the last 10 are still running <laughs> yep. uh the one of the main things you'll notice is that their heel height and the Huge that knee difference. flexion mm -hmm. is completely different mm -hmm. uh completely different so and it um, almost is like what we were just talking about with the arms. Like yeah. you see a lot of uh, flexion with yeah. the elite through folks, the elbow, yeah. yeah, through the elbow and also through the knee. Mm -hmm. And then you see a lot of straight arm and straight leg swinging yep. when you get Absolutely. You know, towards the. Uh, yep. Yeah, and the 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 leg, at the you know, flicking the heel helps shorten the leg. Mm -hmm. You know, the leg's a lever. The shorter a lever is, the easier it is to move it. It's the yeah. same same concept with the arm. So that. If you flick the heel up, it's going to be easier to, to actually drive 
or then move forward. You know, it's just going to yes. be more efficient. So that when that leg folds itself in half, it goes through that swing phase a whole lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so then we're increasing our stride rate, uh, and likely because it's swinging through quicker, indirectly it's able to put more force down on the ground because of the stretch through the glutes and the yeah. hamstring and stuff like that. So, um, and it looks cooler too when your friends you are look, watching you, you run. Look way you look pro. Good you pictures. might not be pro, sure but you can, look, you can look pro. Yeah, make sure. So if nothing too. else, practice this <laughs> so that when you're on course and you see the on course camera, <laughs> start lifting the heels. heels. So you can Flick start heel, lifting heels. heels. Yeah. <laughs> So fall forward, lift the heels. Stand tall. And if you don't cross your arms across your body, you know, if you don't do that crisscross, mm -hmm. midline cross, then, you know, that photo photographer will get your race bib number and you'll have a, Very you true. can actually check out your race photo. Don't waste your so, finish line photo. Practical race tips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this, we got one little bonus here and that is... It's the um, one I was trying to do already. Brian, trying to jump the gun <laughs> on me here. Uh, the bonus part here is no secret... Mm -hmm. And the bonus is to stretch. If you want to improve your running form, your body has to be mobile enough and flexible enough to go through full ranges of motion throughout the entire stride cycle. Uh, on top of that, if you are lacking in flexibility in certain muscles, uh, specifically your hip flexors and your calves, Achilles, calves, all, you know, your lower uh, posterior leg there, um, you are unable to put force as much force in the proper direction to uh, fly farther. Your stride length is affected essentially. So um, stretch, make sure you are at least stretching your hip flexors and your calves. So by stretching the calf, that foot and shin at some point in the stride cycle here get closer together the shin's deeper, so it's actually putting more force backwards. Because it's pointing more forward. Absolutely. And then once you get to that uh, almost to takeoff there, uh, when that hip is fully extended and that leg is pretty straight, uh, if you kind of look at the... Some people look at the angle from like the... the um, like, your like your torso, torso yeah. through the hip. And then some people kind of look at the angle from the like the leg from the ground. Um, but what we're looking at is how deep is that leg uh, in relation to the ground because the deeper that, that leg is or the smaller that angle is from the ground, the more force we're putting backwards, mm -hmm. meaning we're traveling further for every stride. Yep. But if you have super tight hip flexors and super tight calves, it's not gonna happen. you are literally unable to put a lot of force backwards and you're going to end up running um kind of just in a in little short arcs because you're going to have a sh small stride length and you're going to put even if you're putting a lot of force down that force is going to be directed down into the ground making you go up so you're going to fly in this big like arcing path look like, like a gazelle yeah a very short gazelle or what i've uh also noticed and I have an athlete that i'm trying to help work through this is that tightness is causing them to open hip, like open up foot, knee, hip, when they start getting behind hip. Yeah. So they're kind of swinging the leg out mm -hmm. because they can't actually flex through. So it's hitting that sticking point and the correction that the body is making to allow the leg to keep traveling backwards is to open up versus mm -hmm. continue to travel straight line back, which is yeah. leading to back issues. So yeah. um, trying to correct all of this and get the body flexible enough to track in a proper uh, line of movement. Yeah, is we can big we focus. can go a whole another like half an hour on uh, glutes and oh gosh, and yeah, poor glutes and how that affects the lower back and mm -hmm. uh, all that good stuff. But we won't get into that today. Not today, because we, we took up too much time with shout outs. We did. You gotta leave one more too. Oh yeah, yeah. cliffhanger. One more. So uh, those, are, those are our top three. So line of sight, 30 feet out on the ground. Uh, power the legs with the arms. You, if, you have a, if you have a kid and you have a stroller, you can practice with it. Mm -hmm. Go out and, and check it and, and switch hands and see how coordinated you are right and left side. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, borrow a stroller. Or put your dog in a stroller. Do that. 
Put your small. dog in the stroller if you're... If you don't have a dog and you live in Memphis, come borrow this one. <laughs> borrow that dead weight right there. <laughs> borrow Maximus. Uh, lastly, <laughs> make sure you're letting your hips and your chest fall forward together, not one before the other, all at the same time. And then focus on lifting your heels first. Yep. Initially. Once you get that, you can you can think more about pushing backwards. But we got to get this easy, steady little run, smooth yep. running mechanic going first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then make sure we stretch. Perfect. Stretch it. And since we haven't mentioned it yet, and it's so important, do your strength work. Yep. That it de <laughs> definitely will help. Should we just go on strength now? <laughs> All cool. Right. That's all I got for today. That's all Pretty I got. Short, uh, Coach Chris. Out of 30 minutes, nine minutes with shout outs. Oh, also, uh, if you are in the Memphis area, uh, each Wednesday night, Coach oh, Chris yeah. is running 6 yep. p.m., a free uh, run mechanics yep. technique group. So it's going to be running every, I'll let you give the details. Yeah, every Wednesday night um, at the St. Mary's Upper and Middle School track. Um, in East Memphis uh, at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're going to be doing it every Wednesday um, until the uh, time changes, which I believe is November the 3rd or November the 10th. I want to say November the 10th. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we'll be covering a lot of the things we talked about here today, line of sight, your arm action, um, uh, the forward fall. And then lately we've been getting a little bit more into leg extension and the drive uh, the pushback phase. Um, and it's been great. It's been really helpful to a lot of folks. It helps me out. I mean, I used it Sunday when I raced in the relay in the 10 K I was, you know, I thought about my form. I tell people in our group, it's real romantic to think that when you're hurting in a race, you're going to concentrate on stuff that can motivate you or some, you know, something inspiration, inspirational quote, but probably the best thing you can do is start thinking about your form when you get tired and make corrections there. Cause that will have a, immediate impact on your on your speed so but yeah wednesdays Absolutely. at 6 p.m it's tonight actually so come on out it is uh so um we've got uh we we send chris chris has got a whole uh a slew of uh toys out there as well mm -hmm. so when we're working on uh leg extension leg turnover um we can we can get into some of that resisted and over speed training that a lot of runners will never even get a chance to yeah to try uh, let alone benefit from. Mm -hmm. So come on out Wednesday nights Good time. and uh, get faster. Free speed, right? Free, free speed. speed. Yeah, it is free speed. Yeah. Cool. All right, folks. We appreciate you listening, watching, and hanging out. We will catch you guys next time. Peace. Adios.